So glad you have chosen to join me for the sample of the active level half of season two. If it feels too aggressive, I invite you to explore the beginner level on my website. If it's too easy, try the athletic level. And if it feels just right, you can enjoy a longer version of this active level. In the description box below, you'll find a link to all of these wonderful offerings on my website. Now let's start our practice. I want you to have a chair on either side of you just for support to keep your knees nice and stable and you feeling really safe with the routine. We are going to move into our warrior one, which essentially means that we are stepping back and holding on to each chair. You're going to take a nice long step back. You're keeping your knee pointing forward over your second toe and we're going to sweep the arms up to the sky, inhaling and exhale down. We're going to repeat that three more times. And exhale down. Chest and to sky. If you're unsure if you're keeping your knee in a safe place, when you look down, you should be able to see your big toe. And one more time, inhale. And exhale down. Lovely. We're going to invite straightening of the front knee. And you can either place your hands on your thighs or for more stability, you can place one hand on your thigh and the opposite on the chair. I want you to think long and tall so the crown of your head is just following the line of your spine. You want to feel a nice lengthening through the hamstring. And in order to increase that, I'm placing my hand on my pelvic bone to encourage it to reach back. So straightening my pelvis so that it's facing the front of the mat even more. You should feel a nice pull deep in the hamstring. Beautiful. Now invite your knee to bend. Take your breath in. And we're going to repeat that lengthening through the hamstring now that you know to reach back. One, two, as you tighten your quad, your front thigh muscle, that's telling your hamstring to relax. Inhale as you release, and exhale as you go back. Inhale as you release, and all the time, you're keeping the space between your belly button and your base of your sternum or breastbone nice and long so that ensures that your spine is staying long as you're going through the lengthening. Very nice. Now we're going to come all the way up with the knee. If it's comfortable for you to bring your hands to heart center, please do so. Otherwise you can hover them just above the chair. We're going to do that three more times. And exhale down. And inhale up. And if you need to toe touch when your foot comes down, it's fine. And with time as your balance improves, you will find that you can just hover your foot. Lovely. Now, you might want to again hold one chair or just have your hand ready as you reach back with the opposite hand to hold your foot. I want you to press your foot into your hand and your hand into your foot. So I'm not wanting you to pull your foot to your buttocks. Very different than just doing a standard quad stretch, but rather we're creating equal and opposite energies. And if it feels right for you to keep pressing into your supporting foot, the opposite hand can reach to the sky or just allow it to be out to the side above the chair so you have some support if you need it. And we're here for one more breath. And release. Very nice. Release any tension in the ankles. And we're going to repeat that same sequence on the opposite side. Nice and tall. We take a good step back. 
back foot is on a diagonal. Pelvis and chest are facing forward. We're sweeping up to the sky for warrior one. And then the arms are sweeping back down three more times, all the way down. Inhale, reach to the sky. And exhale, sweep down. Inhale, reach up. Lovely. Ensure that as you're coming down, you can check. See, make sure you see your big toe. You know that your knee is pointing in the right direction. You're keeping it safe. And lots of lovely energy in the outside border of your back foot. Beautiful. You can rest one hand above the chair. Straighten the opposite leg. And you're going to invite a nice lengthening through the hamstring. So a nice straight back. Keep your chest up. Even your gaze forward. Think about the leg that you're stretching, that you're reaching back with the pelvis. And that's just going to square things up and give you a really nice stretch through the back of the hamstring. Good. Now inhale, come up. Relax the knee. Exhale, go down, tightening the quadricep. It's going to cue your brain to relax the hamstring. Very nice. Inhale up. If it's comfortable for you to just place hands on your thigh, feel free to do so. So these are all just modifications of hip hinging to keep your spine safe. Last one. Lovely. Hands on either side. We're going to come to single leg. Standing up. Good. If it's comfortable, hands to heart. And then releasing. And inhale up. Exhale, release. If you need to finger touch, absolutely to do what you feel is safe and that your knee is not quivering while you're doing this. Really important to keep your joints also safe. And let's just do that one more time. And now as we go back, we're going to invite hand and foot together behind you. Again, you can use your support. Lovely. Just as we did on the other side, knees come close to one another. Your hand is trying to pull your foot, but your foot is pushing back. Good. So you're creating this equal and opposite force. Lovely. If it's comfortable for you to release and reach to the sky, otherwise just out to your side. A little bit more stable. Beautiful. And we're going to hold for one more full breath. Always when we're on one leg, we soften the knee. So we don't want to lock the knee and put stress on the ligaments. Just make the muscles work. Good. Very nice. We're now going to step back to Warrior Two, holding a chair. Give yourself that support that you need to take your step back. You can either place the arch of your foot in line with the heel of the front foot, or you can give yourself a little bit more opening. It's really a personal choice, both for stability and for the hips. So as you rotate with Warrior Two, your pelvis and your shoulders are facing the long end of the mat. It tends to want to drag your knee in, so it's really important to then keep pressing the outside of your thigh towards the supporting chair. Inhale, arms come to the horizon. Good. From here, we're going to turn the palms up. We're going to take another breath in as we reach to the sky. And exhale, I want you to sweep the air or the sky behind you. We're going to repeat that three more times. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sweep down. 
Inhale, reach up. Exhale, sweep. You're trying to really press your forearms into the space behind you. Lovely. And last one. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, sweep down. Beautiful. Now we're going to invite that front forearm to rest into the thigh. The back hand resting on the other side. Thigh. Press your forearm into the thigh. If this reach is too challenging, then by all means, just press your hand. You want to keep lengthened through your side body. So if you're coming down and you're feeling that your body is collapsing into it, then this is just as wonderful and much safer. And we're going to sweep from here up and over and lengthen the whole side body. You have lots of energy in the outside border of your back foot and feel an equal and opposite force come up through the leg, through the pelvis, lengthening the space of the ribs away and keep that energy coming all the way through the fingertips. Beautiful. We're going to sweep the hand back to warrior two. Very nice. From here, we're going to straighten the front knee. We're going to invite triangle pose. So the hips are reaching towards the end of your mat. So you're really pressing back through the hip. You're reaching forward with the hands. And your hands are going to come down and rest either at the knee or the shin, as long as you can keep your side body long. So again, the inside, you're not collapsing in, but rather you're folding at the hip and imagining that helium balloon under your armpit just holding you long and tall. Very nice. One more breath. Exhale, coming up, out of triangle. Beautiful. Now we're going to rest the hands back down. You're going to pivot your front foot so that both feet are now going to be, and pivot the back foot so it's straight as well. Both feet are parallel to each other. We're going to have our hands rest just on our butt, and we're going to lift our heart to the sky. So knees are very slightly softened. You're inviting a little extension through the whole spine. Your gaze is up, but your head is not cocked all the way back. You're in a comfortable position, tongue to your upper palate. Beautiful. And then return chin back to neutral and crown of your head to the sky. With this long lengthened position through your spine, Invite your hands back to the fold of where your thighs meet your pelvis. And this is where you're going to fold forward. Again, keeping that length that we talked about between breastbone and belly button. Keep that nice length as you go down. As soon as you feel a nice stretch through the hamstring or into the buttocks, you want to keep pressing your sit bones up like you're trying to arch your low back. Lovely. And now crown of your head comes and reaches forward. And so long as you're able to keep the length through your body and that little arch in the small of your back, you can keep dipping down. It is entirely up to the length of your inner thigh muscles and your hamstrings. And each one of you is individual and different in this regard. So please respect your range of motion. Take a nice relaxed breath in and exhale, come up all nice and tall. Beautiful. We're now going to repeat our sequence facing the back of the mat, opposite side. We're going to pivot our feet so that the front leading foot now, which is pointing to the back of the mat, is pointing forward. And what becomes your back foot is at a 60 degree angle. Feel free to widen your stance. Good. We're going to bend the front knee. We're going to sweep the hand up and over, coming into our warrior two. You want to turn your pelvis once again, face the long end of your mat. And just as we did on the other side, palms to the sky. 
Inhale up. Exhale, sweep. And feel those shoulder blades squeeze back together. We're repeating this three more times. Palms to the sky. Inhale up. And exhale back. Lovely. And one last one. With the elbow bent at 90 degrees, we are dropping down to rest into the front thigh. We're pressing thigh into forearm. But if you don't have the length in your side body, please just go into hand to thigh. The top arm is straight in line with your body. And we're going to sweep it up and across, feeling a lengthening through the whole top body. We want to feel good energy and pressure into the outside border of your back foot. Feel an opposite energy coming up and through the side leg, lengthening the ribs from the pelvis, and continuing up and through the fingertips. Beautiful. One more breath in. Exhale as you sweep up and back, coming back to warrior two, making sure that your knee is in a safe place. You can see your big toe. Lovely. From our warrior two, we're going to straighten the front knee. In order to go into triangle, we need to slip and slide our pelvis backwards. Good. And we invite the front hand down to rest near the knee or the shin or onto blocks. Top hand to the sky. You can keep your gaze forward. You can look up to the sky, whatever feels comfortable, but keep the lift through the side body at the bottom as though you have that helium balloon, keeping it lifted and long. Beautiful, one more full breath in. And exhale, come all the way back to triangle. Lovely. We're going to bring hands to thighs. We're going to pivot the front foot and return the back foot as well so that both feet are parallel to each other and facing the long end of your mat. Bring your fingertips back to rest on your buttocks, pointing down towards your heels. Take a breath in, exhale. Invite gentle extension through your whole spine, heart to the sky, gentle gaze up. Lovely. Soft knees. And come forward. Bring your hands, sweep them into the space where your legs meet your pelvis. And this is where we're going to fold, letting your butt go back, keeping a little arch the whole time, chest lifted, keeping long through your torso. So you do not want to be flexing through your spine. This is a wonderful way to stretch, but keep your spinal muscles activated. Crown of your head now is reaching to the wall or sky in front of you. Beautiful. All right, very nice. Breath in. And you can gently bend your knees to assist to come up and out. Very nice. Right, we're going to walk our feet back together. If you need the support of the chair in front of you, please hold it as you walk heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. Very nice. All right. Now, we're going into dancer's pose, and I recognize that most of you should have a chair on either side. And we did all these great openings so that you could enjoy dancer's pose. So, if you haven't done one before, and then do as much of the dancer's pose as you're comfortable, please use the stability of the chair. You can also go and stand by a wall, which is also a really great way that I would introduce it to the class. And so 
So just as we did earlier, we take a nice relaxed breath in and we start by holding hand to foot. And so if you have lots of external rotation and you're familiar with the pose, you can certainly hold your inside of your foot. It's really a personal preference and how flexible you are in the shoulders. So I'm just going to come back because most people are a little more comfortable here. Now, I want you to push your hand into your foot and your foot into your hand. You're going to feel a lot of energy created by doing that. I want you to soften your, the leg that you're standing on and then start to invite the back knee to the wall behind you. And you're doing that by pivoting around your pelvis. So your pelvic bone and your hip bone are working together because you have all your pelvic muscles stabilizing you and you are just pivoting around the hip. If it is comfortable for you to take your hand off your support, you can reach to the space in front of you. And this is where standing near a wall is really lovely because then you have your shoulder and your arm resting and gliding on the wall. So keep pressing foot into hand, hand into foot, wherever the dancer's pose took you. So it might have just taken you into this space. You might be just hovering with your hand over the chair and all that's great. All right, shake things out. And we're gonna do our dancers on the opposite side. And again, you would have your chair or your wall, and I'm just gonna demonstrate it without. But once again, start with the support of hand to foot. Pressing your hand into your foot, foot into your hand. Soften your knee. Really think of grounding through the base of your big toe fifth toe and the center of your heel. So you're really just now pivoting around the hip joint. All these muscles are working hard to keep the pelvis level. You're coming forward. You can counterbalance with the opposite arm coming forward. Opposite to the knee going back. Just take nice full, easy breath. Keep a gentle tightening of your pelvic floor. Beautiful, keep pressing foot into hand, hand into foot. It's gonna add to the stability of the pose. And wherever you are, whether your hands on your chair, you're up against the wall, just aim for stillness around the knee, to keep it safe, and then come all the way back. Very nicely done. If you're interested in intelligent strength training that will build bone, muscle, and your yoga practice, check out this playlist I made just for you. Have a wonderful day.